are fighting about the decline of mankind, whether we are progressing or declining, then the reasons or the causes given by the Buddha, prediction, like we have seen that video, isn't it, how studied what we say, what we have said. How many years ago? Four hundred, isn't it? Nearly four hundred years ago, what we have predicted. But no one has revealed these things in those days. See, now they are revealing after happening. <laughs> we have said that Kennedy and Abraham Lincoln and all the about they are dead. But earlier they have never said this. <laughs> Uh, come, we have got some more chairs. Although the Buddha has said that we are declining, we are going down, it seems that people are seeking something. They want to know something about their life and the world. And what is happening? So, it seems they cannot satisfy with uh, modern scientific interpretation. They need something else. So, I have discussed so far up to the this point that there will be a day that human beings start to attack and kill each other. Animals also never do that. So when our mental pollution, so madness and craving and jealousy and selfishness Hatred, ill will, and various other mental defilements nurtured by their own ignorance. Because ignorance is the main cause. Because of their ignorance, they cannot understand the danger of such evil thoughts in their mind. Now that is why the Buddha start this wheel of existence from ignorance. Ignorance contributes more than any other mental defilement. You can say hatred, anger, craving, selfishness also contribute. Yes, but these evil forces were nurtured, supported by ignorance. If there is no ignorance in our mind, we do not allow them to prevail or occupy our mind. So ignorance starts, but that is not the beginning. One of the main factors, one of the main reasons, for us to maintain all the other evil thoughts in our mind to commit evil. When people are intoxicated, at that time they cannot use their sense of reasoning because of that ignorance. Even uh, under the influence of uh, drugs, or liquor, uh, that intoxication also hinders, interrupts our normal way of thinking. Then some sort of illusions, hallucinations, imaginations start to develop. Then they do not think what they talk. 
they do not think about their actions because cannot reason cannot understand clearly a mad man talk everything what appears in his mind because of that we say that man is mad we cannot understand what is happening in his mind the reason is he is not a hypocrite a mad man is not a hypocrite and a small child is not a hypocrite they reveal everything children they do not know how to hide things. but in our case we pretend we are good harmless cultured religious but in our mind behind the curtain there are so many weaknesses evil forces but we know how to cover how to hold on without allowing our mouth to express all the ideas that we appear in our mind we know so many things but we don't reveal but a mad man cannot do that anything which appears in his mind he go on talking 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 to us he is a man so ignorance is behind so now in many countries although they glorify about their religion try to show that they are far superior to the followers of other religions and try to convert people into their religion but when we study unbiasedly their way of life their attitude their mentality we cannot find any superiority anything advanced in their way of life sometimes worse than us but they try to convert us thinking their religion is better than our religion. that means today the followers of all these religions all over the world they use this religion to maintain some sort of authority power or some sort of gain but they never concentrate or to adjust their way of life according to their basic religious principles then more and more evil thoughts appear in their mind although they talk about it and they can kill others by using their religion as a weapon there's no difficulty for them to do that in the eyes of those people the followers of other religions are enemies they are enemies actually that is the way how they look at if i do not follow their religion they regard me as their enemy so they have no mercy cooperation kindness towards then discrimination hostility accusation criticism or then the trouble start from there when selfishness craving 
created. Appear in their mind, if there is no controlling power in their mind, they can kill anybody, whether they are father, mother or brothers or sisters, no difference. To satisfy their needs, they are desire. So their main object of living is to satisfy their selfishness and desire. So they are willing to kill others. They are doing it everywhere. A matter of twenty-five dollars, they can kill a human being. Then where is the human mind in them? Where is that human intelligence to think no more? It clicked completely by selfishness or craving and any kind of wicked or immoral or cruel thing. They can do. As I mentioned earlier, we should not blame either God or devil for this situation. The Buddha never acknowledged this. Whether they exist or not, that is a different issue. But they have nothing to do with this. Man is the only one. Man is solely responsible for their own deterioration. Don't blame others. It is for your satisfaction, you may say, or oh, this is act of devil or ghost. I do not God. When he got fed up with us, with this world, he want to destroy us. There is no justification in this thing. We cannot agree. After all, who created this world? Who created all these human beings according to them? God created, right? If we are bad or wicked or cruel, who are responsible for that? The one who created us to be like this is responsible. Assume, when he created us, we were not like this. Later, we have developed all these bad things. We learn all these monkey tricks. God has not given all these things. All right? In that case, instead of destroying this world, destroying us to punish, what is the difficulty for him to adjust our mind to be good? If we got the power and authority to destroy us, why can't he use the same power to adjust our mind to be good? Which one is more practical, meaningful, reasonable? Why is it necessary to destroy? That is why we are not ready to accept this belief. Now then, if there is anybody to destroy, uh, we are the one. We are doing it. We destroy the world, we destroy other living beings, and we destroy our own human beings. Existence of human beings on this earth has become a curse to all the other living beings. See how advanced we are. We say 
other living beings are cruel or dangerous, but who are more cruel? Those so-called animals destroy only certain limited number of other living beings. They do not destroy all the other living beings. Let us take tiger, lion, python, or dangerous living. They do not destroy all the other living beings. Then who is the animal on this earth that is destroy every living thing on this earth? Two-legged animal. Uh, that animal is the most dangerous being. Crooked, selfish, dangerous. What is the reason? Because man has developed more selfishness, more craving, more jealousy, more hatred. Other living beings have not developed up to that level. That is why we are wicked. They use only their intrinsic or the natural instinct for their, mostly for their survival. Only for them, if not for their protection. For these two things. But we are destroying them, actually not for our survival, not for our protection, but for so many other purposes. So there is no difficulty for us to destroy our own human beings. So the main cause is that polluted mind which cannot use sense of reason. So the religion or the religious way of life is important for us to understand the nature of that dangerous mind. How poisonous, how dangerous that polluted mind is. No other scientific subject for us to understand this. You can understand science and technology or psychology and various other subjects, but still you cannot understand the nature of human mind. No definition, no clear explanation. A religion tells something about our own mind, which you cannot find somewhere else, especially in the Buddha's teaching. And Hinduism also talks a lot about human mind. But many others concentrate more on God, heaven, hell, and spirits or soul. But they do not concentrate very deeply about human mind. To them, faith, belief, and prayer are more than enough for a man to be religious. But when we analyze the teachings of the Buddha, the Buddha says, just because you believe in God or in Buddha, or you pray.
pray and worship or recite something. It is difficult for us to believe that you are religious because until you maintain so much mental impurity, selfishness, jealousy, anger, greed in your mind by keeping, maintaining all these evil forces. You believe in God, you worship, you pray. That is why the Buddha says, still you are not religious if you maintain those evil forces. In the mind. Then try to understand the nature of your own mind. So each and every person maintain certain degree of natural character by nature, by birth. But others may say, God has created you like this, but Buddhism never accepts. That is your own property. He has pointed out six characters that we maintain. I have heard, let me repeat, remind. What are the three characters, six characters? Raga charitra, dosa charitra, moha charitra, sattva charitra, buddhi charitra, vipakya charitra. These are the six. No one is free from some of these characteristics. Some are very good, some are dangerous. Some are useful, some are useless. Uh, that is how differences, discriminations, conflicts take place among human beings because of these different characteristics. Now, husband and wife, those who maintain different characters, although they are good people, disagreement, misunderstanding always takes place because of these two different characters. Again, parents and children, same problem. What are those six? Remember. Raga, lustful. Lustful means more sexual. Inclining towards or concentrate more on sexual. To many people, romantic way of life is the most important, interesting. Otherwise, life is very tough. To some others, that way of life is a real nuisance. They say, we don't like that. Forget about that. I'll see the difference. Now. And others, dosa. But more dosa in their mind. What is dosa? Anger or hatred? hot temper, for nothing, lose their temper. Then they become very violent and aggressive. Then violate peace. That is their nature. We can understand this from their childhood. And we say, God has given this. No. That is their own behavior. Then, now you can understand 
why it is necessary for us to know the nature of our own mind. For what purpose? Without hiding, without pretending, you must try to find out a remedy to overcome that weakness if it is bad or dangerous. Now then religion tells you what to do. Now you are hot tempered. Don't try to justify, glorify. Admit that it is a weakness. So that can create enormous troubles and problems. Now then, find out how to calm this mind, how to adjust this mind without allowing that anger to flare up. Now then religion tells you how to do it. After that, you don't disturb others. I remember few years ago, I received a letter from England. After reading my book, Why Worry? Husband had the chance to read this book. After reading and reading and reading, he found out this is a very interesting book. And his wife is a very hot-tempered woman, he says. I think still I got that letter. She always fights with neighbors, friends and relatives and husbands and children. He thought this is a very good book for his wife to read. So, handed over to her and asked to read. After reading and reading and reading, he found out the wife has changed her way of life. Now she can tolerate so much, very seldom she shows her temper or anger. He was noticing these things. Then after a few months' time, completely changed her way of life. He is very happy and written me a letter for writing this book. I am a very happy husband today. Formerly my wife was a very hot-tempered lady, but after reading your book, why worry? Now she maintains sweet temper. She is very kind to all of us now. Understand. It is not through the influence of God or this or that. Through understanding. When we analyze the nature of the mind, uh, then we can understand where are the dark corners in our mind. Where are the devils and ghosts are hiding in our mind. So when we meditate, what we do? We open this mind completely. Then we can see devils are hiding inside. And some people get frightened, and then they go mad. The madness comes from there. Their own hidden thoughts, evil thoughts, that they maintain are hiding them in the dark corner. Look like devil. Now this is the advantage of meditation. Meditation means we open our mind and try to understand what this mind is. Then find out the weaknesses and dark corners. Then clean, clean this mind. That is the purpose of it. So the Buddha taught us. So all our mistakes, our troubles, worries, problems, calamities, enmity, jealousy, everything we are confronting today with cause of that mental attitude. Don't blame us. This is the second character. Then, Moha Charita. Moha means power, close. 
cannot see things from that is called illusion. We read book, we listen to others, we think, but still ideas never penetrate into the mind because cannot go through. Dalit. The dull mind remains as it is by birth. Many people are very dull, cannot study, cannot think, cannot understand. That is their need. You know the story. In Dhammapada, the latest edition, you can see the story. A young monk was ordained by his elder brother. He was an arahant, the elder brother. The brother tried to teach him one word or sense A long time, repeating, 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 repeating. Uh, still this young monk cannot remember. No memory, cannot maintain anything in the mind. One word only, I point. Then the elder brother got fed up. Then told him, you better go home, no point of remaining as a monk. Wasting your time. Then the Buddha came to know this. Ah, now the Buddha is needed here. Because the elderly monk still cannot read the mind properly to find out where the mistakes to adjust it. Arahantas also cannot do that. Many Arahantas cannot do that. Only Buddha. Then the Buddha came to know this. And this young monk doesn't like to disturb and go. He was crying. He said, I don't like to go home. I want to stay back. But my brother asked me to go away. He was crying. And the Buddha said, don't worry. Don't go home. Stay back. Come. You better sit down here. Take this piece of white cloth and go on rubbing and rubbing and rubbing, reciting this. Of course, this is the language that they use to talk. Rajo Haranam, Rajo Haranam, Rajo Haranam, Rajo Haranam, Rajo Haranam, Rajo Haranam. Reciting, reciting, reciting this, you go on rubbing and rubbing and rubbing and as long as you can. That's yes, all. This young monk does not know actually what it is. But he knows what he recites. This is the language that they know. Rajo Haranam. Rajo means dirt. Haranam means clean. Clean the dirt. Clean the dirt. Clean the dirt. After rubbing and rubbing and rubbing and rubbing for many hours, he found out that pure white piece of cloth has become very dirty. Rubbing and rubbing and rubbing. But he is reciting, cleans and cleans and cleans. Then started to think. Yes. Now I can understand. By using our mind, actually what we do, we dirt our own mind. Now that is what we are doing. When you use our mind, Always we use selfishness, craving, anger, jealousy, greed, then dirty the purity of the mind. But we develop all these things to make use of the mind to gain something or to do something. Yes, now I can understand. Now I must know how to make use of this mind without making He went on con contemplating very deeply, because the Buddha has paved the way 
for him to think. Formally, he does not know how to think. He, he found out where the mistake in his mind and opened that way. Then he got the chance to think. Ah, this is the Buddha's way of thinking. He helps us to open our mind to think and understand. Ah, that is why the Buddha is important. Buddha is not just for us to worship and pray. Yes, we respect him. Very good. Out of gratitude, appreciation, we really respect him. But the Buddha never expects. He wants us to follow the advice given by us. That is enough for them. Now that is why I told you, religion can tell you the nature of mind and point out where the mistake is, especially Buddhism. Now let me complete this character with you. I have completed lustful thought, hatred and ignorant illusion. Then the other three. Buddhi charitra. Buddhi means intelligence. Wise. Some are wise. They can understand things very easily. Intellectual. By nature, that intellect was not given by another person. They are all. What they have developed during their previous birth, but still maintain, continue. Mental process. Mental process continues. But all are not intellectuals. All are not wise. Gain, that is the say. Dandha Bahu. Dandha means foolish. Bahu Mo. He says, majority here in this world among human beings is fools. Fools means ignorance. Very, very few intellectuals. How many Albert, Albert Steins are there in this world? How many Burton Russells are there? How many H.G. Wells are there? How many Charles Darwins are there in this world? How many Buddhas are there? Uh, they use their intellect and wisdom. But all the others follow the method introduced by them. Even then, Many people cannot understand, cannot appreciate. Their minds are like that. Another advice. When majority follows certain things, a religion or maintain some sort of belief, people say, oh, Many people believe this. Many people follow this religion. Therefore, we also must join. The Buddha has given this advice. Don't follow majority. Just now I told you, the majority are belong to that foolish group. Very few intelligence among those millions who follow. Don't try to glorify our majority here in this world, follow our religion or belong to our race or our culture. You must try to find out the truth. Don't follow a majority. Of course, in a democratic country you have to follow a majority vote. <laughs> that is politics, not religion. You cannot measure religion in democratic way to find out if you take a word to find out which religion is the true religion in this country, one religion gets majority vote, 
But do you think really they can find truth in that religion, although they got majority vote? The truth is like that. Many people cannot understand the truth. Uh, by nature there are some genes, mental bodies. From their childhood they have shown their super, what you call more advanced intellectual capacity. They could understand many things which elders could not understand even after their study. Uh, then, Vitakka Charitra, number five. Vitakka means deluded mind. Always confusion, no clear picture, clear vision, clear understanding for anything, and cannot decide anything, cannot make up the mind either to do or not to do. Now, this is the nature of some people. They are correct. When some people say, this method is correct, they follow. Then another group come and say, no, that is not correct, you must follow this, uh, then they follow this method. Then another group come and say, no, all these are wrong, you follow this method. Throughout their life they follow others, but never realize this way. They want to say, that is their need. I have met many people. How they have changed their religion from time to time. Many. They said, I was born in a Hindu family, brought up according to Hindu tradition and way of life. Later I found out Christianity is better than Hinduism. So I gave up Hinduism and accepted Christianity. After some time I found out there are many uh, loopholes and many things that he cannot agree according to their theories and beliefs. So after that he gave up Christianity. Then he thought, Buddhism is far better than Christianity, he thought. He accepted Buddhism went on practicing and listening and this and that. Later he found out Buddhism is very weak, not strong enough, too much freedom, no authority. It is just like no man's business. Gave up Buddhism also. Then he found out Islam is better than other religions, full authority, and then Duan accepted Islam. After practicing this religion, he found out there is no freedom. <laughs> Too much restriction and punishment also. And gave up that also. Now they say they have no religion. I meet many people. They have no religion. And this is the nature of their mind. There is one thing that you have to understand. We have not selected or chosen our religion purposely. Just because we were born in Buddhist families, so we were brought up according to Buddhist tradition, Buddhist way of life, so Buddhist thoughts practices nurtured and developed in our mind. So naturally we have become Buddhist. And Hindus, Christians, Muslims also in the same way. They were born in their particular, that respective 
religious family, they were brought up according to their religion, and no one has chosen his religion purposely. But the trouble is, their parents and elders and their religious authority poison their mind by talking ill of others from their child. Now this is the dangerous thing. Develop these ideas, some sort of enmity towards others, discrimination. Now, when they grow up, those ideas, those beliefs, discrimination also will up. Simple example. When small children study in kindergarten, who are belong to Buddhism, Hinduism, Christianity, Islam, and belong to various races, Chinese, Indian, European, and Malay, but those children are innocent children. They do not know anything about discrimination. Because these ideas were not yet implanted or developed in their mind. To them, all are equal. They play together, they eat together, because they do not know how to discriminate. When they, you know, after ten or fifteen years' time, their minds are completely polluted, poisoned by the father and mother and elders and religious people. So against other races, other cultures, other traditions, other religions. And they take for granted these things earlier. And some of them become religious fanatics who hate all the other religions. And that is the biggest mistake that we assume. If we allow those children to study without introducing any particular religion at that age and allow them to choose a suitable religion according to their way of thinking, education and understanding. We never face these discriminations or difference. By force, by punishing them, they introduce their religious tradition thinking this is the only correct method, others are wrong. Now let us refer to the Buddha. Then you can understand why in the West many people introduce Buddhism as a religion of freedom and reason. It's a title given to Buddhism by in the West. What does it mean? When you refer to Anguttara Nikaya, one of the Sutra Pitaka books, you can find. The Buddha says, Whenever you find truth, facts in life or in this world, if you can understand that it is true, you can accept this. Don't think that you cannot accept this just because it is not in your religion, in Buddhism. Not in your culture or tradition or way of life. If you think in that way, you are wrong. Truth is truth. Accept. Whether discovered by scientists or psychologists or religious or free thinkers, anybody who can understand things properly. And your duty is to accept it. Let us take 
a simple example. Astrology. Many people are ready to accept astronomy, but not astrology. They have religious prejudices. They say if we accept this, this God against our religion. Now that is the biggest mistake. Astrology is not belong to any religion. Religion has nothing to do with this. It is a scientific subject. How these stars and planets and galaxies influence each other. That is astrology. Can we deny this? Then why do we want to show our hostile attitude towards astrology? Say, oh, it is not in our religion, therefore we cannot accept. Uh, what the Buddha says, he says, astrology is true, but you should not become slaves to astrology. You must understand your mental power. When you develop your mind, this power can become more powerful force than the planetary system. Uh, look at them. If you keep quiet, without developing your mind, uh, then you have to surrender everything to your planet. Uh, this is the nature of enlightened religious people. All the scientific subjects discovered by scientists from time to time, many religious authorities had a losing battle. They say this goes against our religion, cannot take that. But refer to the Buddha and see. No problem. Truth is truth. Buddha has given permission for us to accept the truth. Not only in the Buddhism we can find truth in Christianity, Islam, Hinduism and any other religion. Can we reject them? Just because they are not belong to Buddhism. No. Respect, the Buddha says. Respect and accept if it is true. Then he has given the reason. Why? Of course, unfortunately, some religious authorities try to tell us. We can find truth only in their religion. What the Buddha says. The founder of a religion or a messenger who got a message from heaven who revealed all these things to us lived only for a few years. Some lived only four years, some others, say Buddha, forty-five years. How can one religious teacher reveal everything that which exists in the whole universe? Ridiculous. Impossible. Therefore, how can they say the whole truth, or how can they monopolize truth is belongs to only that religion? If Buddhism says, you can find truth only in Buddhism. We disgrace the Buddha's enlightenment. Because Buddha never said this. You can see many truths in other religions. The reason is circumstances, incidents. Otherwise, whole day and night, twenty-four hours a day, they are not going on talking like a tape recorder. Especially when you read that book, Dhamma Father, more than 300 occasions due to certain occurrences, conflicts, clashes, misunderstanding, trouble, ah, then the Buddha approached them. Ah, then reveal the truth. Do you know why? Ah, this, because you never realized this truth. Then he 
then he did. He has taken a hand of sand into his hand, or dry leaves from the jungle into his hand. Look at, it. see how much remains in my hand, palm. Very little, isn't it? Yes. But how much sand you can see on the bank of the river or sea beach? How much dry leaves you can see in the jungle? Many more, isn't it? So far, I have revealed only this much for you. There are so many things that I have not understood because there were no circumstances. There must be some reason. Now this is the truth. Therefore, how can we say one religion can reveal everything in this world? Now, still I do not know what I am talking and where I am. <laughs> what is our main main subject that I have gone so far, <laughs> I do not know what I am talking. <laughs> Can you bring me back to the main point? Oh yes. Uh, buddhi charita, wisdom, understanding and freedom, slowly, slowly have gone very far. Then saddha charita, last one. Saddha is devotion, faith, confidence. By nature, some are very devout. They have so much faith. But very few people use this faith and devotion with understanding and wisdom. There is no religion without faith, without confidence, and without devotion. No religion. If you accept a religion without devotion or faith, that religion becomes a theory, or a philosophy, or a psychology. Is not an academic subject. Like the theory of evolution, nobody regards as a religion, isn't it? Because no devotion, no faith. Reason now, that's all. And biology, chemistry, geography, you study. But you regard them as different subjects. But you never worship, you never offer joystick to the founders. How many people offer joystick to Charles Darwin who discovered the theory of evolution? Because that aspect is not there. Devotion is not there. Theory. So in religion there must be devotion. If there is no devotion, you take this religion just to talk about. That is not the purpose of religion. That is philosophy. Theories. A speculative subject. Ah, then the danger of this devotion is it. If we use only faith, and devotion, without using your common sense and reasoning and understanding. Forever you remain in religious kindergarten, never go up, playing with dolls and A, B, C, D throughout your life. Devotion, devotion, praying, praying, worshipping, worshipping, reciting, reciting, offering, offering, burning, burning, always in the kindergarten. You do not know how to go beyond that. When you go higher and higher and higher, then you can minimize all the other activities 
your more intellectual understanding, then you adjust your way of life because you have confidence. If you practice a religion without confidence, your mind rejects nothing in your mind. If there is confidence, simple example, now you practice Buddhism, no confidence, but perform all the religious activities, spend a lot to practice your religion, but no confidence. At any moment you can change your mind if there is no confidence. Others can change your mind. If not, you yourself get fed up. You give up everything one day because no confidence. By knowing this, the Buddha has pointed out the nature or the duty or the responsibility of confidence or faith or devotion. In Alavaka Sutra, what is the chanting book? You can see what the Buddha says. When Alavaka asked this question, what is the highest wealth for a man? Now, the answer given by the Buddha is diamond, isn't it? Gold, diamond, jewelry, isn't it? Money, highest wealth. Then the answer given by the Buddha is this. Sadhita vittam puri sasa sittam Sadha puri sasa for man, not only for man, woman also. Sittam, higher. Vittam, wealth. The highest wealth for man is his or her confidence or faith. It is true. All the other items that you accumulate as your highest valuable property or wealth can abuse, misuse, rob by others and burn Wash away. Ah, this is the danger of wealth that you value. Answer. When you develop your confidence, no one can destroy this. And whatever you handle, whatever you do, you can do with confidence until you reach the final goal. You never give up. Whether in your business or your marriage or religion, whatever you handle, the confidence must be there. That confidence gives moral support, a strength in your mind to overcome all the problems and difficulties. Otherwise you cannot. Little bit of disturbances come, you surrender, you give up. You create frustration, disappointment, grumble, run away, because no confidence. You do things with confidence. Take your married life. How many times a day you fight with your wife or with your husband? Argument. Sometimes exchange beating them. But if you have started this married life with confidence, you never give up. Never give up. After fighting, arguing, shouting at each other, and next moment come and embrace. Because of that confidence. If there is no confidence, that separate. Religion. You practice religion. You believe so many things. While you are practicing all these things, you have to come across so many sicknesses, robbery, disturbances, disappointment, then you start to think, I have been practicing all these good things. Why all these bad things come to me? What is the use of this religion? You are. 
because you had no confidence. You never realized. Ah, here, highest wealth, saddha, faith, confidence. Again, in another discourse, the Buddha says, saddhaya sarati ogam. Those who want to cross a river where there are very strong currents, mm-hmm. the whirlpools, the water, by using full effort and energy, going against the current, you can swim to cross the river in the same manner. If we use faith and confidence and devotion for your activities and religion or whatever may be, you will be able to reach your final goal or target. To go through or to overcome all the obstructions or hindrances or difficulties because of that confidence. Again in uh, another discourse, Kasi Bharadvaja Sutra, this Brahmin was a farmer, very stingy man, never gives anything to anyone. The Buddha wanted to teach him how to give. When he come to know that there are such people, purposely he goes there. So when he was working, he, the Buddha, reached there with his betting ball, it was Makan time. He was sitting with the betting ball. Then this old man got angry. He scolded the Buddha. Do you know, we have been working so hard to cultivate body, to find out our food. Without doing anything, simply you come and stand here with your begging bowl. It's called at the Buddha. Then the Buddha said, Brahmana, do you know I am also working? I am also working very hard. Not only you. Then he asked, how can you say that you are also working? What are the things that you use? You got only your begging bowl. We got so many things for us to do our work in the paddy field. And then the Buddha pointed out the things or the material that he used. He said, Sadha bijam kapo vutti vanyame yuga nangalam iri isa mano yuttam Sati me pala pajanam. Then he went on next place. What are the things that he used? First thing he said, Sadha, Bija. I use my Sadha, my faith, my confidence as BG. Seed. You use one kind of seed for your body cultivation. I use this kind of seed for my cultivation. What is that seed? Sadha, confidence and faith. And why did he introduce this as seed or seed? Very meaningful. That is the first thing he said. That means this must come first. Not later. You know, when we plant any seed, say mango tree, plant mango seed, after some time this will come up. Trees growing, 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 growing. And the roots also growing, growing, growing. If the roots are not strong enough to hold this tree, when it becomes huge tree, the whole thing will collapse. 
but the roads are not stolen. The wind or the rain and affect this thing. Because no proper firm footing there. Roots are not strong enough. In the same manner. When you believe, when you practice, when you accept, when you start to do anything, whether your religious way of life or family life or business, without faith, without confidence, if you build up any moment that can collapse. So the faith, confidence is more important, but must be used with understanding. Otherwise, you become a very kind-hearted fool. Others can bully you because you are devout, you have faith. Understanding must be there. Now these are the three characters that we have by nature. All of us maintain certain degree of these characters, but one of them is uh, NBC. Yes. So today, only one item so far, I have gone very far, you know, here and there. So, because we, I wanted to explain the nature of our human mind, and where are the mistakes are, and why do make, we make mistakes, and why do we start to kill and disturb others, because of this undeveloped, untrained mind. So, from the Buddhist religion, you can find how to train this mind how to understand the nature of mind. So other religions also talk about mind and advise people. They advise people to practice more what you call precept and morals and ethics and principles. Yes, no difference. But they develop more faith and confidence toward God, they develop more faith and confidence toward that side. The Buddha advised us to concentrate more on our human mind, to understand the nature of mind. If we can understand the nature of mind, we know how to overcome all our problems, and one day we will be able to see the end of all our problems by using that mind. Uh, coming to 9.30, only one item today, um, number 23, oh, long way to go. Yeah.